What is happening? Um, pretty stoked right now. I got to call back a seller real quick. I'm actually just pulling this up. Um, I am here today. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, picking some markets and stuff like that. I'm going to talk about a few deals we got going on. Keep like a general update on our business and what we got. Um, kind of go over all that stuff. So let's see. So, so far are, we've had a... Um, had some leads come in. Let's see. What we got. I'm just pulling up this property real quick and then I'll share my screen. How's it going today? Everybody having a good time? Everybody having a good day? All right. So we got. Of course, I do. is in this is c972 c972 all right so i'm gonna actually call this seller back this is we had a conversation the other day let me share my screen show you guys what it looks like this guy right here so we got this property here uh it's this one c972 so we're taking a look at this. Talk to the seller the other day. He's actually got three properties all right here. Um, pretty decent looking property. I mean, it's got like an old trailer on it and all that stuff. It's got a little stream that runs to the back. Check the overlays right here. Let's go see. It's got a flood plane in the back. No big deal though. Um, we have water features and wetlands. Let's see. You have a water feature in the back right there. This is all wetlands in the rear right here. Um, pretty normal stuff. Honestly, that's actually a feature in land. So if you don't know that, that's actually a good thing to have, you know, some kind of water and stuff like that. And having a wetlands on a 30 acre property like this is not really going to affect it that much. Um, so this is the one property. This is the other property in question right here and right here. Now you can see this one also has a water feature and some wetlands. Downside is I have to buy this property and this property for this one to be worth anything. So he's currently under contract. I think it's possibly to sell this one. And I spoke to him and I said, you know, if you sell this, you basically kill the value on this one. Can't do anything with it. So that's kind of what we're going to call back and follow up on this conversation. And then I'm going to go through some market selection and all that stuff. Um, let's continue. Go through some market selection, pull some data. Uh, we want to. We have a county in Washington. I just want to verify my data and stuff like that, and then uh, we'll do that. So I'm gonna let me give this guy a call real quick. So we're actually. Let me see if I can pull up a comp. So this property right here, I'm I'm thinking we'd probably be all in this thing. Hopefully around like 120k. I'm gonna shoot for less. We'll see. This one is a recent comp that just sold. Uh, 149,000. This is for one of the parcels. Uh, 30, uh, 23 acres. So for that. So what we're looking at is this 30 acre parcel. Hopefully buying this for 70k. And then these two additional properties for 52,000 for both of them. So I'd be all in this deal for about 125, and I should be able to exit this deal completely around 250, maybe 300 for everything. Um, so it's pretty, pretty good spread. So I'm just gonna give this guy a call real quick. You guys get to listen in, and then I will uh, go through the rest of the stuff we got going on. Six one. 2749. All right. You guys should be able to hear that. Can you guys hear that? Drop a drop something in the comments if I, so I know you guys can hear it. Hello? 
Hey, John, what's going on, man? It's uh, Dennis with Cash for Land. All right, Dennis. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic, my man. How about yourself? I'm doing okay. Awesome. Um, hey, just wanted to give you a ring back uh, and talk to you about the, the properties. Um, so tell me what, you, uh, what you're thinking about doing with the one. Did you, did you find out more information about that? Uh, no, not the one, not the C4, no. Uh, okay. The one that's uh, up there is the C5 and the C97. Okay. You say, you say go give me an uh, estimate uh, on the C7. Yeah, so C972. Uh, yeah. That one, we're, we're good to go. I could do 65000 for that one. Um. And, I want 70. <laughs> I get you. The only reason why, uh, I gotta get I gotta look at that trailer and see what it's gonna cost to get rid of it. Um, that's my main thing. It, do you know if there's step? There's money, there's money in those trailers, those Franklin trailers speed we can tell the step on. Okay, so you're gonna get rid of them? Yeah, I know good, but one of them would burn down naked and there might be a, some wood or some left on one of them. There's two two uh, frames there, all iron. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. All right, so that makes it a little bit better. Um, is there septic or anything on there already? Is it a what? Like septic or anything on there, a well? It's a well there, yeah. And septic or no? Like for uh, for the toilet and stuff like that, or is it city, city water? Um, yeah, it's a uh, septic tank there, yeah. Perfect, okay. All right. Um, all right. And how about the other two? So if we were to get this one and the two across the street, so all three properties, you think that's something that we could put together? Well, that's the one that's pending now. In fact, I got the other one that checked in now. That somebody already bought the C4. Oh, they bought? Uh, we get some information on that. The only one that's vacant now is the uh, C5. So they already bought C4. That's the front there. But, you know, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the downside if, with if, if in fact it falls through and it's going back then, that'll, that'll be up for sale too. Cool. I get these sales almost every week. <laughs> I, buy I'm, I, I think it's gold there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, possibly, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so here's what I'm thinking: if if you could find out if that one's not going through or not, you know, I, I want to buy the one behind it and the one in front. But if you sell the one in front. The one behind it has no value. I could give you twenty six thousand for the one behind it, and the twenty six thousand for the one in front. So the two of them fifty two thousand. But if you sell the one in front, I don't have access, and I'd be buying that property. I can only offer you like seventy five hundred bucks. So if I could buy the two of them together, then it makes sense. If not, if you kind of killed the value by selling just the one. Does that make sense? Yeah, but you wouldn't want to buy the one, the, the C seven nine. You wouldn't want that. I do. If if if, if the others don't go through. No, I'm I'm not. Yeah, go through. I'm good to buy the C seven nine. That one I'll, I'll I could send you a contract for. Um, I could do the seventy if you uh if you could get rid of the, if you're taking the trailers. Well, I have no use for the trailer, no way. But I live in Philadelphia. <laughs> And now I can go down there and house somebody to move the trails. Right? It's all it's been so like it is. Okay. So what about 67? This way it gives me a couple bucks just to uh, get rid of the trailers. Does that work? I pay for all the closing costs and everything like that. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that cool. Like a okay, perfect. Um, let me see. Do I have your email? I'm sorry. Let me see if I have your email. I'll have to get your email address. I don't have an email address. Okay. <laughs> no problem. I'm full. I don't have all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No worries. We have other ways of doing it. Um, you you still are on uh, Indiana Ave. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. So what I'll do is let me let me catch up with a, um, a mobile notary, and what they could do is just stop by your place. And then you just sign the contract with them. Pretty easy. Okay. And okay. I have no, no titles, no, no deed, and nothing to the land. Well, you know, you should, that you, as long as your name is on there, you should be good to go. So once we open up a title, 
we'll find out all that stuff. So yeah. it's just okay. step one is getting the contract signed. Step two is we bring it to our attorney. He starts digging in. And that's when he finds out, you know, the chain of title and all that stuff. So yeah. as long as everything's good, we're good to go. Yeah. So okay. I, I'll send you, um, I'll do that. And then if you can, is, is it any chance, any chance you could, uh, give that person a call about that other property and find out what's going on with that? Because, you know, we'd be interested in buying the other two. So I could send you all three contracts, one shot. Um, yeah. I understand, but it's probably a problem because, I, like I told you, I have a, a lawyer working on that uh, suit for. Right. And, um, because that's, that's uh, my aunt's property, and that's a little, little, little complicated. Yeah, that I get. Yeah, usually if it's an aunt's property or something like that, I get it. Um, once you've inherited it. I remember you telling me that. Hey, I got a question. Who are the Alstons? The Alstons are my family. My mother was Alston. Okay. It seems like they've, uh, have they been down there for a long time? My mother died when she was 41 years old. That'd been about 60 years ago. Wow. Because uh, I see a lot, I see that name a lot in this area. Yeah. It is a lot of houses in there. But yeah. You guys have, you have a lot of cousins down there? My mother also we got to, uh, to be brothers by my father. He was a brother. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. I was curious. I see Alston a lot. And uh, actually, we bought another property from another Austin recently. That's that's another reason why I came up. So, uh, yeah, let me let me actually find out. Um, where is it? Uh, Johnny Austin. Johnny Austin. Yeah. No, that's, that's not Johnny. I don't know, I don't know Okay, Johnny May Austin, and uh, wait a minute, Johnny May Austin. Yeah. Johnny Mayo. Oh, that's why you said Johnny. That's my late wife's name, Johnny Mayo. Oh, really? Oh my, that's so yeah, funny. Johnny Mayo Austin, though, that, that wouldn't be her. No. no, no, this was um their grandfather or something like that. Yeah, okay. That's interesting. Okay, cool. So here's what I'll do. If you could find out, if you want, it's up to you. I want to I wanna buy all three, right? So if you want to okay. call that attorney and say, hey, look, I know you're dealing with this already, but I have somebody that wants to buy all three of them. But he can only buy them if he if I could get C four. So if you want to tell him that, C four, I'm working on thirty four thousand dollars. That's another difference. Thirty four thousand. Right. Right. But now here's the thing: you sell it for thirty four thousand, you kill the value on the one behind it, so you get nothing for that one. Yeah. So I could do. I was coming in at almost fifty three thousand for two of them, for the both of them. For the both of them. Yeah. Yep. Well, let's, let's see what happened. I'll give you another couple of days on that one. I'll let you know. Okay. I should be hearing, should be hearing from sometime this week or if it's a week. Okay, cool. All right, so I'll give you a ring back. Uh, what's today, Wednesday? Yeah. I'll give you a, back, um, give you a ring back Friday. or Actually, I'll probably call you tomorrow about the contract for the one, the C972. Okay. And then uh, I'll follow up with you on Friday about the uh, C4. We'll see what you got. Yeah, and maybe we maybe there's something we could do. I could I could run my numbers a little bit better. Maybe I could come up a little bit more as long as I could get both of them. You know, that's okay. the major that's thing. A good idea. We can do it again. Okay. Yeah, because if you if you're at 34, basically I'd give you I'm giving you the 34 for the front one, and then I'm giving you 20 for the back one. So I'm basically at almost you know 53 for those two lots. So you're getting 20 for the back one if you sell the front one. I can only give you seventy five hundred for the back one. So if I buy them as a package, I can give you twenty grand for the back one. If I buy them just as the front, just as the back one, I can only give you seventy five hundred. So that's why I want to get them together because then I don't have any, I don't have to worry about easements or road access and all that stuff. Wait, 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 you lost me there. Sorry, thirty five hundred for for which one? If what? All right. So if you sell C four, right, and that's gone. Then the back one, um, C5, I can only give you like 7,500 because I don't have road access. I have to sit there and get easements and all that stuff. So that's why I'm saying if I buy the two of them together, then I could, I'm good. I could, uh, I could give you more money. That's why I could give you like the 53. But um, if you sell the one for 34, you kill the value on the one behind it. 
Yeah, and that's that's what I'm trying to. A lot of other people want it, but okay, let me see what happens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me know, and I'll uh, I'll I'll give you a ring tomorrow, and we'll go from there. Okay. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Okay. Thanks, Sean. Right, okay. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. You too. Bye. Cool. Another property. So this is a pretty good property right here. This is one. Um, let's see. This guy right here. We're going to contract. This is a buy for. So we're buying this for sixty-seven two fifty, right? And then this. We looked at the comps. I can pull. I'm pull some more comps here. I have them over here. So we know that we know this is actually. Um, we pretty much know what this property is going to sell for because we just bought this property right here. We just bought this property right here. Uh, let me zoom in for sixty one thousand five forty, and we're selling this for one hundred and fifty thousand. So uh, probably about one hundred forty. I think we're listed for maybe one thirty around there just to move it. And this is only eleven acres. So now we're getting this property uh, right around the corner. Look at that. Less than, let's see how far away this is. Um, so this is, as the crow flies, about 10,000 feet away. So that's what, two miles? Something like that away? Less than? as the crow flies. So that's pretty good. So we'll be able to move this one. It's right by 401. It's right outside of Raleigh. Here's Raleigh down here. So sweet. Love it. Another contract. Um, so as far as everything goes, do you think the shape will impact the sale? Uh, I don't, I don't know if the shape would impact the sale. Let's, let's look at that. It's a, it's still got really good road frontage. Let's take a look. So it's not including this parcel. This is not part of it. So it's just this. Now, here is a good thing about the shape. Technically, if I wanted, I could cut this out. So let's just say I cut it right here. Now, I know this county and this county is pretty easy when it comes to like dividing out properties. So I could cut this out and sell this for five and a half acres. And I'd still have this big, uh, uh, big chunk back here. This is like what, uh, 29 and a half minus five. So I'd still have like a 25 acre parcel. So I could probably sell this parcel right here. If I were to chop this out for around 50 grand and I could still probably sell this one for about 150. So, I can make almost 200 grand. So I don't I don't think the shape's really going to affect it too much. I just think these things I got to get rid of. It's going to cost me a couple bucks. It's not a big deal. That's why I got three grand off the price. But he originally replied on this one. So that was what we, we send mail for. And then I talked to him. We noticed that he has this property. And, you know, that's why we, we were like, yeah, we like this one better, honestly. Um, this one has no road access because he's going to sell this property. So... Yeah, I don't think the shape's going to affect the sale too much because you still have, I have clearing, I have good trees right here. So we could put a, you could put your house right on the road if you wanted. And then you have a nice clearing in the back or you could just do whatever you want in the back here. Let me turn all these layers off. So let me turn off wetland. So we have that. So I think it's a good property. Let's see the, let's see what we got for a 3D map. Topography here is great, by the way. This whole area is super flat. So you can see this. Yeah, we're pretty good. Let's pull it up on data tree, C972. EPN state is NC. And he gets Warren C972. So 
Let's see if I can drop my little guy here. Sweet. All right, so that's what we're working with. He said, we got this trailer right here. Um, got a school boss, magic school boss. Look, this is like a perfect entry property. Super easy. So what we would do, knowing this area, is we're going to pour a gravel driveway. We already have the clearing done. Um, pour a gravel driveway right up to here. Cost us a couple thousand. We're getting the one C1040E. That one we're clearing and putting the driveway in. So I guess that's the trailer that burned. Okay, he's got the cars there, so that's all going to go. No big deal. Clear it out. Get that out of there. And then we'll... Uh, We'll be good to go. We'll have our forestry guys come in. We'll make a nice little path. Um, we know it has septic, so we're already good with that. We don't even need a perk test. So this is a really good property. This is the neighbors. This is the one that has that little cutout in between. It's a nice little house right there. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm happy about this property. Cool. So that is that one. You can see this pretty flat relatively nothing really going on too much yeah i'm happy sweet very good awesome um so that one we're going to do a mobile notary to get that guy under contract pretty easy um cool so let's get into the meat and potatoes of things um anybody have any questions while i'm on here happy to do some q a and all that stuff i'm going to look at this uh so we're actually we're looking for some more markets to kind of get into. I want to look at Washington right now. Uh, these mailers, let's see, when do we send these mailers? We sent them June 15th is when they actually hit. Actually, I can tell you right now. Postcard. Let's see, we got no tracking. So we did Orange County, um, six nine was mail date. So these probably hit mailboxes. Uh, let's see, these hit mailboxes up until six twenty, pretty much. So I'd say he probably got it delivered six fifteen or six twenty, in between that time. So. Almost a month and a half ago, and we still got some calls off it, which is pretty good. Um, we got very little calls off this. We got, uh, let's see, we got a couple calls off here, no deals. We got like two calls off here, a couple calls off here, nothing really good though. One, one is a 97 acre property that we might actually do a major subdivision on. That's a pretty cool property. I have somebody, you know, a partner of mine looking at this stuff right now. Might do that. That one property alone, if we get this one, this major subdivision, it's 97 acres, buy for 14,000 an acre. Exit on that one, it'll be about 55,000 to 80,000 per acre. So you're talking about something in the millions if that deal actually goes through. Buckingham VA, we got zero leads from. Hampshire VA, we got zero leads from. West Virginia zero leads and they hit almost a month ago this is just going out and then we just sent out another uh what do we send out now let me see i think we just sent out another four thousand mailers they just started hitting um well they won't they won't start hitting yet but we just added four thousand more pieces to the to our um to go into here so they should be going out in the next week so hopefully we get some more stuff coming up soon. Let's see. So I wanted to look at this. I want to look at Washington. Let's see what we got. Washington. I want to see. Let's sort by here. I want to do. So I'm looking for pending STR. I want to do 0.15 for pending. 
to 15%. I want to do at least 0.15 for the one month at sell through rate. And I want to see what counties we got. So we got Franklin, Island, Mason, and Pandoria. Ooh, Pandoria is actually the one. So let's look this up. Pandoriel. So let's go back. Um, so advanced search. So this is we just we just sent out mail to um, a neighboring county of Pandoriel. It was uh, uh, what county was it? We sent it to Stevens, I think it was. Really tough counties to price. Honestly, these. These counties are like not for the faint of heart. It was a pain in the ass to price. I'll show you guys um, what I'm talking about. So, and this is kind of like when I'm looking for a property, that's this is the kind of stuff I look for. Let me put this on. If you guys ever, if you're already, I'm sure most of you are already in this, but if you're not, here's a quick little. And there's yeah. Five step guide to six figure land business. Check that out. Um, it's video something they put together. If you guys want to learn how how we do all this stuff, so let's look at this. So this is um, Pandoriel. Now I'm looking at. I just want to see land. So what I look for specifically when I'm looking for stuff I want to market to, I want to basically buy for fifty, sell for one twenty five, something like around that range, right? I want to make at least 50 grand per deal after lenders, after everybody. So when I'm looking for properties, I kind of look for that price point. And I'm, I'm going to see first what's going to sell. So I want to see his stuff selling for about 125000 to like 800000 Okay. Now let's see. I got 81 homes for sale, land. Let's go see sold. Let's check the last year. Before I filter out to lot size, I want to see if this is happening. So I know from my um, the Leo Market Analysis tool, Pendoriel is really good as a 22% sell um, pending sell through rate. One month is 20%. It's got a three month is good. Six month is pretty good, and the one year is good. One year is great. So there is good supply. 119 available. 27 under contract. So it, it's a good county. Let's see, we have. A lot of out-of-county owners, and this tool is great, and a lot of out-of-state owners. So that tells me, okay, I can mail 2,900 people that don't live in the county that we be more, more prone to sell than uh, anywhere else. So what's up, David? So we're going to check that out. Um, so Pendoriel, I like it. Now, let's see what I was talking about before. So I wanted to see what is selling, like what range, what type of property, all that stuff is selling for that 125 to 800 K range. Right. So I'm going to come into here. Oh, it's so funny. Look at everything in this area is all the stuff that's on the waterfront is all selling for that range at 125 range. Isn't that crazy? Um, so you could tell like that's obviously the value is there. Now, I'm sure if I sort this out, let's say, let's do 125 uh, to 10,000. Probably going to be everywhere else. Yep. No, actually, no, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. It's pretty much everything. So this is the <laughs> this is why this county is so hard to price because it's like, what do you go by? How do you how do you price this? So, um. We're going to have a really tough time pricing this one out, but I know the values there if I could hit the numbers and kind of figure it out. And it's just going to take us doing a few deals in the area to kind of figure it out. So in this whole county, you have 20 acres. Let me see if the range is. Let's do five plus and see what's selling. Okay, five plus, all of them are selling in the southern part of the county. Um, most are on the water. So you got a 20 acre for 180, a 40 acre for 180. Where's 28? Yeah, see, they're like 
on the other side of the county. You see like this whole area. This might be selling for more this whole area. What's this one? So 20 acre for 185, 20 acre for 140, 25 acre for 215, 20 acre. Okay, so this is pretty, like right here alone, this is really homogenous, like this area. You have one, two, three, four, five comps, like all selling for about the same, pretty close. Um, this one is... Yeah, same thing here, 195. Okay, so this one is like has like a structure and all that stuff. Why do you think this one sold, right? Look at the property. It's got tiny homes on it. It's got a beautiful thing, uh, driveway, active community, all this stuff. So this is telling me, is this in a HOA? Let's see. 20 Newport, Washington. Heavily treaded. Da, da, da. Huckleberry's Newport. Community Newport. Okay, let's see if this is also Newport. Community, Spring Ridge Estates, so that's a different, beautiful. Okay, Spring Ridge Estates is a 55 plus. That's over here. So is this also in the same community? Um. Underrail, not near farm, good views, easy access, sublime land, elk community. So it doesn't really have, it's not in a subdivision. Okay. Yeah, this is a beautiful parcel right here. Wow. Did a great job. Um, let's see what we got over here. So you got 150 for another 20 acre, 315. Uh, for 32 acres, so that's pretty close. It's high actually, but it's got some structures on it. That's why 240 for a 40 acre. Okay, so that's a little low. 151 for 20 acres. So this is this whole bottom of the county is trading so evenly. This is a not up here. It's 40 acre for 195. Um, Yeah, would you look at that? So basically everything below Diamond Lake is kind of trading pretty damn close to each other. Let's see what's up here. 160, 44, 260. Up here is selling for a little bit more, it looks like. Four. Okay, so I like this. I'm going to remove this outline. I want to check what this area is doing as well. And just see if this is also trading about the same. Because if it is, I'll just pull this whole area. Not just go by the county. 150. Okay, so it looks like to the left of Highway 2... Is trading a little bit higher. 185. 21, 236. Okay. Some 200. Anybody have any questions I'll answer while I'm kind of looking at this stuff? Ten acres. 20 acres. Yeah, it looks like so. I could probably pull this whole like area right here. And even down to here. No, maybe not down here. 10 acres. 10, 10. 50. Sweet. Okay. I have a feeling I could pull everything from this state line from two all the way into Diamond Lake. So let's see. Um, so we're going to do Pendoriel. We're going to look at 
I want to just look at living area square foot, zero to 600. I want to do... So the goal here is I want to get these down to a, a small section so that I could actually show it on the map. Um, let's see. Forgot this. I gotta do pool, lot area, lot acreage. I'm gonna do nine, I'm gonna do 19.9 to 29.9. Let me just get a count. Okay, I gotta get a little bit smaller. A little bit smaller. So let me do this. I will take out do not mail, exclude do not mail. I'll take out. Let me do last sale. Last sale is before three years ago. Okay, now let me see. Let me see. Get count now. Okay, that didn't really help. Transaction types. So we'll carry back. Mailing city transaction type. Let me take off owner occupied, corporate owned, previous owner occupied, absentee owner, get count. There we go. Okay, cool. So one of your results, I am gonna do your results on map. Some reason where's my little there we go more map there we go sorry okay so I want to see your results on map let me just zoom out it's still in Warren County for some reason beautiful all right so we were talking about this area right here Polygon. So I want to do freehand polygon. Let's remove this. Let's just remove that. Okay. Get count. Okay. Beautiful. All right. So this is my polygon. Now what I'm going to do here is I want to look at these properties. This is something that we would like typically have a VA do, or I'm, I'm still figuring out exactly the right way to do this. So I still personally do this, but we're going to be having a VA kind of come in and do this. Just give it a second, let it load up the parcels. What I'm basically going to start looking for is I want to see what of these properties have road access. Why are you not showing me this? Come on. Come on, data tree. Why are you why are you playing games with me, man? It's not showing me the parcels for some reason. Which is fantastic. Or 
Arsenal, Nottingham, and Flood Zone. Those are the three things I kind of look for. Because I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I filter out these things. If it'll let me do it, this is real time, guys. This is pretty normal how this crap works. It looks like these are utility lines right here, so I'm gonna take this property out. I don't really want to be next to utility lines, so I'll trace these up. I'm only gonna market to good properties, right? I just I'd rather just market to properties that I know are good. Um, so if I have stuff that's like in a utility way, in any of like no road access, whatever the case may be, I'm just not gonna send mail to it. Um, it saves my mail costs. So look at this one's dead on the utility lines. Saves my mail costs and all that stuff. Um, and then I don't have to do like crazy negotiating when it comes to prices and parcels and all that stuff. So I would just much rather just not market to those people. Okay, cool. Did I lose it? Yeah, still going. So all these... I don't know why my parcels aren't showing up, which is fantastic. Cool. So let's go back down here. You can see all these properties are still all along it. So I'm just going to get rid of them. And they're pretty easy to spot. You know, like when you're looking at a map, you'll, you'll see these types of like electric utility easements and stuff like that. Let's get rid of all those. This doesn't look like it has any road access. This is way out in the boonies. Get rid of you. That looks good. Of course, I don't know because my parcels aren't showing up. That looks fine. That looks good. That looks good. That looks good. Good. Way out there. Fine. Okay, this looks like a little subdivision. Way out there. It's fine, fine. Way out there. Good, good. Good, good. This one's way out there, so we'll get rid of you. Get rid of you. That looks fine. That's good. Looks like it's got a county road going through, or some kind of little road easement coming through here. This, if you would show me the property, I can tell you. Hmm. Okay. Cool. This is on the river for some reason. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah. So basically you're buying a chunk of the water. This is probably owned by like some kind of, yeah, this is not, not something you want to mail to. It's not, not going to do anything for you. Um, Whatever. Reflection Lake. I'm sure this is all the HOA. Okay, cool. So I'll go through all this. I'm just going to pull all this data. So I'm going to keep, I would just keep going through this stuff. For some reason, I don't know why. Let me try refreshing this. Probably just got rid of everything that I searched. Yep. Lovely. No big deal. I'll just have to go back and do that polygon again and just redo that stuff because for some reason it's not showing me any of the parcels today. No. Yeah. Strange. Oh, well. So I like this county a lot. Let's see what other counties we got. Um, Mason County. Where's Mason County? It 
Ooh, it's out by Seattle. So this is probably going to be a crazy market out here. For sale, land. Oh, it's actually not as bad as I thought it would be. I thought this would be very expensive. Let me see, over five acres. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, sold 19 homes in the last three months. It's pretty good. What do we got for the one year? 103, one month, six, and then for sale, 69. Okay. So what are they calling this? You got a pending of 20%, 22. Okay. Pretty good. It's a, it looks like it's a very active county. I might mail this one. Gorgeous. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Cool. I like this county. Looks like the, all right, it's our price point. Really hard to, to price. We're going to have to like kind of polygon this out. Um, I'm going to have to polygon this out and stuff like that. Uh, Ryan, how many pieces of mail are you sending out monthly? Do you have a see a better response for postcards or letters? We send letters. So we send blind offers. So basically our offers are, we look at this, we price it all out, and then we send that right out. Um, I don't do neutral letters or anything like that. Basically a neutral letter is like, hey, we're interested in buying your property. Now, problem with those is you're not pre-qualifying your, your leads. So... I'd rather send a neutral letter. I mean, I'd rather send a um, a blind offer and just get get the people that are actually like interested in selling rather than getting like a thousand people to call me and say, hey, yeah, how much is my property worth? I'm not a, what should we call it? I don't sit there and give them evaluations for the properties, right? If I was an assessor, I'd be an assessor, but I'm not. So I'd rather just send a blind offer get the property into my CRM if they're interested in selling. Uh, it, it makes the acquisition process so much easier. Like a lot of our things we send out, are like one call closes, two call closes. So like they'll call in, have a quick conversation. We vet it out, make sure it's actually something we like. And then it is, then we just call back and lock it up. So if you saw in the beginning, uh, yeah, I think you were here for that. Like, that's the type of conversations he had. That was only the second time I spoke to that guy, and uh, you know, one call close. It's pretty pretty wild. Or that was a two call close. All right, so let me see this. I want to see. Okay, so Washington. I like. I really like Pendoriel. I also like. Mason County was pretty good too. Did have a high available, but there's a lot of pending and under contract. So it looks like the smaller properties are moving really fast over there. So what does that tell me? So you have, what's that, Mason? If you have a lot of the smaller properties going under contract really fast, let me see. 0.252. Five acres. Cool. So these are going under contract really fast. Look at them, 200,000, 200,000. So what can I do? If I get a five acre parcel, there's no reason why I can't chop it up and sell for a pretty hefty, hefty penny. So um, this might be a good subdivision play. I just have to look at their rules and see what their rules are with all that stuff. Um, I'm sure in here, I could probably even find like some micro markets some really good subdivisions and all that stuff that we could just mail to as well instead of doing a whole county specifically. So I like this county. This is a good one. Okay, let's see what else we got. I want to check Ohio out. I have I have a couple. We just mailed to one county in Ohio. And I, I do like it. Ohio seems like it's got some action going on there. So I want to see what Ohio is looking like these days. So um, 
Ooh, okay. So quite a few active ones. Let me see. I want to see my available. I want to do no more than 250 available. Let's see what that cuts me down to. Okay, so this is, wow, look at this one. Fulton County. Okay, Fulton County, let's go no max. Let's do five acre plus eight. Huh, okay. Um, that's eight for sale. Let's see what the solds are in the one month. That's yeah, low. Okay. So let's adjust this baby. And I want to see availables. I want to see more than 25 sold in the last month, the last six months, so that I know it's got some activity. 87, uh, Delaware County. And as far as, oh, sorry, Grant, uh, Ryan, as far as pieces go, we're, we are right now sending anywhere between like 10 to 15,000 a month. We're actually trying to get that up to 25,000 a month. It's kind of our goal. So what I, um, what that come, what kind of look like? If we're doing twenty five thousand a month. We should estimate. We get about for ten thousand. We get about forty calls, and we get about one out of four contracted. So if we're doing twenty thousand. We're doing twenty five thousand. We should get anywhere about a uh, hundred calls, and our hundred calls should get us one out of four. Should get us about 20 contracts easily. Easily. Yeah. Between probably 20 to 25 contracts with 25,000 letters. So, and we're looking, we're actually going to probably see like a drop in that a little bit because where we're going is up market a little bit. We're looking to do these bigger deals and these bigger deals. Oh, so this is probably going to be a great county for this right outside of Columbus. This is like a land bank county all day long. Um, these bigger deals, the buy for 50, sell for 125, stuff like that, they tend to take a little bit more mail to get, right? Because you now it might be about, our KPI might be about 3,000 to 5,000 letters. We still don't know yet to get it. I'm just going by other people's KPIs and tracking that out. All right, so we got, this is like a solid county. Look at this, sold and... Last year, let's see what the one month looks like. Seven. And for sale, we got 49. Seven. So it's like a 14% sell-through rate. It's pretty good. I would totally do this market. I like this a lot. All right, let me check. Well, now data tree decides to work. I want to see Ohio. What county is this? Delaware. Or county. We're going to be hopping off in a few minutes. Anybody have any questions? I'm glad to answer them, but I am going to be hopping off in a minute. So please ask away if you have anything. Got a bunch of people watching. This is pretty good. So I want to do zero to 700 here. I want to do lot acreage of five to 4.9 to nine. Just get count. Let's see how many are there. 3,400. So I want to get rid of exclude do not mails. I want to do. Owner occupied. 
Do you have any slick ways to sort land in subdivisions? The only approaches I have seem pretty tedious. Um, so if you're looking for a specific subdivision, kind of, Brandon, so what you could do is uh, if you're in data tree, wow. Okay, so most of the people that own in that area are not absentee owners. Look at that. Look how much had dropped from just adding the one filter. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, all subdivision. So you could pull in here if you're in data tree. Let's see. You could pull just the subdivision. Just trying to find it. I don't typically do subdivisions early, but you could pull all the available subdivisions. They're not, they're not coming up. Yeah, I don't know what's up data tree today. It's, it's really acting up. It's really annoying. Um, you could pull up specific subdivisions if you wanted, or you could pull up all the subdivisions. Kind of annoying. I don't know why it's doing that. But honestly, what I would do is look for pockets, pockets of activity in those areas, and then check the subdivisions and stuff like that that are there. So if you see like, and it depends on your acreage size, are you looking to do like smaller stuff, bigger stuff, whatever it is? I I like to be in the, the bigger stuff. So I'll look broad rather than micro. Um I look at the whole county as a whole, not just the, not just uh, subdivisions. But if you're looking for smaller stuff, I would say you know set your filters to you could look for a specific subdivision. You could look for you know stuff that has an HOA, um, all that. You could also look up all the subdivisions in that county and then type them into data tree individually. But for some reason, I'm not. It's not letting me do this today. So the vision is this. Like Concord. Let's see if this comes up in data tree. Concord. Yeah, so it does come up. So here's all the, all the subdivisions. So you'd have to type in subdivision. They'll come up. I don't know why it's coming up today. Let's see if there's any in that subdivision. Ten properties. You know, in that, let's just see, just for giggles. Let's go my map. So you could sort out those little subdivisions if you wanted. And then it's easy to price these two when you're here. Because, you know, that, dude, this thing is not showing up today. It's strange. I don't get it. See, it looks like there's power lines right here. See that? So this is a property I would not buy right away. I'm looking at that. All this stuff. Anywhere there's property power lines, I would just avoid or try to buy it as cheap as possible. But honestly, I just want to mail the good stuff. I want to mail the stuff road access. I want to mail all the good stuff. So that's just me. So awesome. Um, so that's pretty much what I got going on. As far as like an update of our business, it looks like we're we just got 4,000 mailers going out. It's be about 5,000 going out this week in total. Um, we should see a response on that somewhere in the realm of, uh, 5,000. We should see about 20 calls from that. That's, that's also including like, um, um, like do not mail, uh, like whatever. Don't mail me again. So we should probably get 20 calls. I'd say we probably get one to two contracts out of that. So we should be pretty good. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to actually get now, right now I'm going to go find a mobile notary and uh, get that guy contract out tomorrow. Um, so probably cost me like a hundred bucks to get a mobile notary out to his house and have him sign our contract. It's just easier than sending mail and all that stuff. When you have a live person there, they tend to sign better. Um, 
So I should have that under contract by tomorrow. We'll go double check that with title. We'll pull some information on that, get title on that. And then if we could close on that one in the next two weeks, it'd be pretty good. Um, so what we do with that is we'll bring a lender in and we typically pay our lenders around uh, anywhere on that property. We'd probably be paying about 10 to 12 points. So if we hold the deal for three months, they'll get 12 points regardless. So um, yeah, we will pull a lender in there. If it's a buy for 67, we're going to probably get uh, 67,000 plus 2,000 um, plus 6,700. So we're going to raise 75,000 to purchase that property. And that'll be for our improvements, for clearing it out, for the purchase, for the closing costs and all that stuff. And then the lender will get times point one two. They'll get back their total 72,000 plus or 75,000 plus $9,000 once we exit the property in 90 days, hopefully. So that's kind of how we do it, what we do with like lenders and how we piece it all together. Um, everybody wins. Our realtor would get on this on that property because our list price is probably 150 ish. He'll get 8%, but he does all the pictures, the makeup, everything. Super easy. So that's pretty much it. So if you guys have any questions, don't, don't hesitate to hit me up. I'm always around. All right. Later.